to have you here in the studio. Hi again, this is Chuck McLaughlin, and I'm doing a few of these little quickies for you. Uh, this one is going to be a little colorful autumn tree, and uh, I'm just going to push it out, and uh, I'm going to show you what I'm using and how I'm using it so that you can catch on. All right? Whenever we go to this quick stuff, uh, I like to be kind of, oh, I don't like to, I don't like to um, spend a lot of time, and who knows, these may be a sketch for a bigger piece that I'm doing. And so I want to get the, get the color that I'm going to use and maybe, maybe um, a little bit of the composition and maybe I'm going to add some more subject matter or maybe I'll cut some of it out. I don't know. I'm just going to find out. I'm going to find out. But it'll be a picture and it'll show you what I'm doing. I've just kind of washed this blue turquoise on. It's made by um, Lucas. It's a strong pigment, Lucas 1862, um, the year I was, uh, I was uh, vaccinated. But uh, I can see the granulation right in here, and I like that granulation. Um, I'm going to just kind of take these beads out and I want to start with fall meaning the orange tree is going to start <coughs> start uh, shedding from the top so I'm going to add some light warms to it cool warm I'm playing cool against warm please see that and uh, even though I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, have a warm background, it's going to work. Um, just stay with me. Just a few minutes. Just stay with me, and I'll, I'll get this over with. I've let this wet. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna. Just kind of push that in there and, and blend it while the, the lighter yellow is still wet. I might want to take, take the water off this brush and push it down in. Then I'm going to go to a little darker on the sienna. Less water, more pigment. And because this paint is still wet, it's going to work its way down because my board is tilted and I want it tilted because it's going to do very nice little things, little accidents that are going to happen with the water mingling with, with each other. I'm going to put a little there's a little red little cadmium red light and then let's go to some carmine I like that carmine don't you oh isn't that nice then a little red purple these are colors that everybody makes and they all have different names for them I happen to be using Lucas and Holbein but uh, Other manufacturers have them too. All right, now I want to just see if that just works the way I want it to. And it will. It's going to work the way I want it to. Let's just go back here with a little bit of Naples yellow up on top. Because this is... And 
and we're going to call this that's a, that's a little bit of sienna that, that we put on on top of this and in a minute I'm going to show you why Put a little lemon yellow for the edges. Bring it in so it's part of the painting, so it doesn't isolate itself out there. Now we'll finish the bottom off with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown and Old Sienna. Now let's add just a little bit cadmium red to that so it's not so dark and mushy. And really this is an exercise in just seeing what colors work with what. That's all I'm interested in is I'm trying to find out what colors are going to work with what. And I may, I may just decide that I want to pull those colors together, so I'll just pull them together. Didn't hurt anything, did it? In fact, it helped it. I like that. I like that. That is so cool, so cool. And uh, you know, where we come here, where we come from down here in North Carolina, or up here in North Carolina, however you want to say it, and I'm going to put a little blue into this mixture of sap green, and uh, maybe we'll just put a, put a line of maybe pines back there, huh? How's that? A little line of pine trees back in there. All right, here we go with the pines. Let's go with the pines. Notice how this hand steadies this hand. Porky Slater taught me that. Porky Slater was the journeyman I worked for when I was in the sign industry. That's right. Anyway, so I want to get this stuff in quickly. I don't have. I don't want to spend a lot of time with it. I'm just going to get it in. Okay. I want to put some blue in here too. I want to have a lot of color in my painting. I, don't, I hate paintings without sufficient amount of color. Okay, now maybe we'll just take the hair dryer and dry this up a minute so we can come back at it pretty strong. Is that going to be all right with you guys? You guys going anyway? You didn't go anywhere, right? No, okay. All right. We're going to take a break and just uh, dry this with the hairdryer, okay? I'll be right back. Thank you. I'm back. All right, let's finish this up. Um, I didn't do anything but dry this thing out, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to add a few little things to it. A uh, little sap green and a little bit of, of ultramarine um, blue. You can either use the ultramarine light, and I'll just put the idea of a few trees back there. And this is to give you an idea of get in there and get out of there, and and uh, uh, don't don't be fooling around with a lot of detail. You can get a nice little sketch going, and if you want to go back in and and fool with it later on, go ahead. But the idea is to go to get in there and, and uh, get it done in order for you to uh, 
be proud of what you be, be kind of loose and, and, and have that loose uh, feeling about the uh, painting. If you get in there and you, you just kind of uh, feeling your way along and you got everything down that supposed to be there, all the nuts and all the bolts, that really is that really isn't going to help you. That that only makes your painting nice and tight and doesn't give it that freedom. It gives it that photographic look. Even abstract painters have a nice, great feel to them, and uh, they do that because they let themselves loose and they paint with big brushes and that type of thing. I'm going to put some big color in here now and finish this up. I'm going to put a little bit of the sky color in in there and just uh, shape it just put it in there so you can see it you can see it from a distance in there okay that's all right put a shot or two right up in the hand and right up in there and that's it all right let's finish up the road and uh, get on the highway all right let's um let's get a nice I'm going to put two colors in here at one time, then pull it over. I'm going to put a Van Dyke brown and a sienna. Then I'm going to put some water on the outside of the, see how it, when it hits it, just pulls it right over. Isn't that nice? Then I can get on here and shape it out and let, let the paint, let the water do what it wants to do. Carry a little bit of tissue with it so it doesn't run on you. But if it does run, so what? Gives it that nice, loose freedom. And... I'm down to here, I'm just going to make a little dark so that it shows that the shadow of the tree covers the trunk. And this is something you can, you can do um, I mixed two or three colors here and I'll All right, now let's finish this up. Here we go. I'm going to go to a bristle brush because I can get it done faster. All right, here we go. All I'm doing is just laying color. Remember I said that I was more interested in the color relationship than I was subject matter. Subject matter is good. It's all right. Nothing classical, nothing that's going to go to the loo, but it's going to give me an idea as to what colors work with what. And if I want to change them, I, I don't have to get into a, a big tree, a big painting, and, and find that I haven't used the right colors. So uh, I'm happy with these colors. I might want to change a little bit of them and move them around uh, a little bit and maybe even um, take one or two out of there. I don't know. I'm going to have to look at it and uh, see what I'm going to do. So I said to you in the beginning that I was more interested in color relationships, what I wanted to do with those colors. and and uh, would they work together and uh, they look like they'd work take some of the detail out i 
that's where all the all the that nice texture there. You gotta go there. Little growth up, growth up. You gotta go there. So I'm liking it. And of course, you can do lots of things with it. You can do a multitude of things with it. And there we have it. We have the orange tree. So anyway, thanks for being here, and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to contact us at Jerry's Autorama. Good day.